Welcome to this video series on ODE45. Before getting into some of the specifics about MATLAB and how to implement ODE45, I first want to talk more generally about numerical integration and motivate it in terms of how it applies to dynamics. So let's take, for example, a particle that is moving along an arbitrary path in three-dimensional space. So let's say that this is our particle here, call it particle P, and it's moving in a three-dimensional space along this curve. And maybe it's moving along this curve due to a number of different forces. Call this force one, maybe that's a thrusting force, maybe there's a small motor or jet attached to this particle. Force two, perhaps there's a drag force acting on the particle. F3, maybe there's a spring attached to this particle. And generally speaking, we can have n number of forces all acting on this particle and affecting its motion. The position of this particle at any instance in time can be described by the position vector r of p. And this position is relative to a fixed point that I'm calling the origin of the coordinate system. Newton's second law tells us that the sum of all forces, let's say sum of all forces fi from i equal to 1 to i equal to n, is equal to the mass times acceleration of this particle. And setting up Newton's second law for a particle, at least, describes what we call our equations of motion. So this tells me that at any instance in time, if I know the forces acting on the particle, I can tell you the acceleration of the particle. However, we're oftentimes not only concerned with just the acceleration of particle. Perhaps we want to know the velocity as a function of time or the position as a function of time so that we can better describe where this particle will be some time later. Now, these equations of motion are very powerful. They let us literally predict the future. We can tell what's going to happen five seconds from now, 10 seconds from now, 20 seconds from now, if we only know what the forces are. And the reason we can do that is because the acceleration of a particle is directly related to its velocity and it's directly related to its position. Recall that the acceleration of a particle p is equal to the first time derivative of its velocity. Additionally, the acceleration of a particle p is equal to the second time derivative of its position. So these are very tightly coupled variables. They're related just by means of derivatives and integration. And perhaps some of these forces may even be dependent on things like velocity or position. We said earlier on that perhaps one of these is a drag force. Often drag is some constant times velocity or constant times velocity squared, depending how you want to model it. Uh, spring force may have dependency on position. And so baked into this equation might actually be velocity and position variables. And that's known as a differential equation, when we have a function that is dependent upon other variables that are related by a derivative or integral. Now, if you remember to your differential equations class, some differential equations are very easy to solve. So if this equation of motion, f equals ma, were quite simple, perhaps we could directly write down what the velocity is at any time t. And if it's a simple equation, maybe we can even write what r of p is at any time t. This is a closed form solution. And these are typically the ones that you've dealt with in your differential equation courses. However, more times than not, these aren't closed form solutions. Oftentimes we have differential equations or equations of motion that are very complex that we can't just simply write out what this closed form function would be. And in those scenarios, numerical integration is key. Numerical integration allows us to get around that difficulty. It lets us estimate what the output of these functions are using numerical procedures. So there's a number of different numerical integration algorithms out there. We're going to discuss a very simple one known as Euler's method in this next video. And that will hopefully give you some context into what ODE45 is doing in the background when you use it to solve these differential equations.
Thank you.